You need a both and mindset. The really successful purpose-driven leaders I know are almost schizophrenic. Um, have some of you heard of Paul Pullman at Unilever? Super purpose-driven CEO. He would stand up and he would make an inspiring speech about how Unilever touches three billion people every day and children are dying and soap can bring health to the world. And it was this amazing, inspiring speech. And then he would turn around and he'd say, and you? Your numbers in Indonesia in the beverage business, they're down. I want to know why. <laughs> and he would keep doing that. He would oscillate. And you need to be able to do that because being purpose-driven doesn't mean being some wishy-washy person. It means being a better business person, someone who absolutely understands the business but can also translate that into the effect it has on the world. And so being able to hold that tension, that both and, super important. Everyone in this room runs a considerably large organization. And you know, if you bounce back to your organization, you say, yeah, we're going to do purpose, no problem. Everyone will look at you and go right back to business as usual. So um, how do we think about it? I got interested in purpose because I found it was the most effective means of driving large-scale strategic and organizational change. Let me show you very quickly um, a tiny bit of the research in this area. Um, what the research is quite clear on is the effect on individual employee motivation. And there are basically four things that authentic purpose will do. Now, let's be really clear. This isn't just you say, oh, we're going to do the right thing and put it on the wall. You really do it. And if you really do it, you get shared alignment of shared beliefs, which is super helpful. You get authenticity. You select for people who are more authentic and more rooted in their personal values and people who share an identity of wanting to do the same thing and who are more pro-social. And that gives you a bunch of stuff you'd really like. Efficiency wages is the economist version of people will work for less and work harder. Um, strategic alignment, which is what you described, which is, OK, we're all going in the same direction. Super helpful. Intrinsic motivation. I love working here. The work itself calls to me. And we know that people are much more creative and do better quality work if they're motivated intrinsically as well as extrinsically. You get dense social relationships and trust, which, because that's where my work is, my research, my pointy-headed academic research is, I'm not going to say more because I won't stop, but I've come to believe that high levels of trust and deep interconnection allow the company to be much more productive, creative, and courageous, which if you're trying to change the company is super helpful. So that's the research on employees. As I say, the research on consumers all over the place, but this emerging sense that, that you can really get people to switch. So that's nice. But when you run purpose... So this is a measure of how much purpose there is in the workforce. It's derived from four and a half million employee surveys um, asking, you know, does my firm really have meaning? Does the management really act on it? So if I graph from almost no presence to more, and then I ask what effect it has on financial performance, you will see that this line is flat. For those of you who haven't been in school for a while, that means... <laughs> It has no effect. There's no easy relationship. So anyone who tells you that becoming purpose-driven, you're done, but you'll be rich, as far as we know, and this is one particular study done by one of my colleagues, but um, this is very general in the literature, no easy relationship. If you divide the sample into two, so you can choose... We have high camaraderie between employees. This feels like a family. I love coming to work here. This is really great. Or I have high strategic clarity from management. I know where we're trying to go. I know what the milestones are. I know what the strategy is. I know how purpose is integrated into the strategy. One of these groups outperforms. Which one? How many people camaraderie? How many people strategic clarity? It's super interesting. It turns out that having happy employees doesn't drive financial returns. It's nice to have. And one way to think about this result is it doesn't reduce returns. 
Sometimes people think if they're going to be more purpose-driven that they're going to give up returns. There's no evidence for that in the data. But if you can link it to the strategy of the firm, then you're off to the races. So this is that purpose needs to be right through the firm. It needs to be clearly understood how it's part of what you're trying to do strategically. Now notice there's no drawback to beginning at the edge and making your employees more keen and more excited. I mean, that's a super thing to do, but you need to link it to a strategy if you're going to get anything out. We have a huge literature about driving change and how to do it. And so setting realistic targets. Um, I've been with too many senior leaders who've said, OK, we're going to do everything different. And they put in place this massive change effort. And the first thing that happens is what? Those of you who lived through massive change efforts, what's the first thing that happens? Performance collapses, right? Everybody's too busy changing. So your numbers go down, and often you get fired right about that point. <laughs> So managing, you know, do it like not all at once, doing it in steps, finding the regions that will get embrace this, picking the people who are on the wavelength, demonstrating it works, you know, be, be smart. Capitalism is the only tool that's going to get us out of this mess. It's the only way we know how to scale solutions quickly. It's the only way we know to create the jobs that people want. And the good news is you get to do something about this. This is an incredible privilege and honor. I work all the time with groups who are on the edge of despair because they feel there's nothing they can do. They're caught in a system which is taking us down. You are fortunate enough to be in a position where you really can make a difference. You get to experience that discomfort, not just on the bike, but in your work. I spent 30 years studying how firms change. This is the change of our lifetime. It will be difficult. It will be hard. But I can promise you, it will be profitable, and it will be worthwhile. So join me. Join the hundreds of business people, the hundreds of thousands of business people who can see the world needs to be changed, who can see that something might need to happen, and are thinking, does that mean this week I should do something different? And the answer is yes. This is the week, this is the day, forward is a pace. <laughs>